Welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast with Jacob Ayers, providing actionable content to help you along your journey to financial freedom through real estate investing. As the premier asset class, real estate has helped ordinary people just like you amass fortunes. The benefits of passive income from real estate investing will allow you to live a life you want. And now your host, entrepreneur, real estate investor, and apartment deal syndicator, Jacob Ayers. Hi, and welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, episode 246. Hi, and welcome back to another episode. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I'm excited to reintroduce to you our guest, Damian Lupo. Now, Damian first appeared on the podcast back in episode 52. We had a ton of great discussion around finding your purpose. Well, I wanted to bring Damien back on the podcast today and talk about some wealth creation vehicles. Now, Damien's real estate investing career began almost 20 years ago when he bought his first rental income property with a Visa credit card and a $6,000 cash advance, which he does not recommend, by the way. Now, Damien went to every seminar he could find and did everything the coaches told him and still ended up almost declaring bankruptcy because he was doing the fun stuff and not the hard work. Damien flipped a switch, did the work it took to be successful, and in the next five years, built a $20 million portfolio with 150 properties, including houses, apartments, and condos. But as so many others did, Damien lost everything in the 2008 crash. Damien rebuilt his investing career and went on to become a sort of genetic entrepreneur Having started and owned more than 35 different businesses, Damien is also the world's most unemployable man, as he likes to say. Well, Damien's role in the real estate industry today is as a lender where he can live the lifestyle he wants while building his wealth and advising the investors he partners with. Today, we're going to dive in to how to generate and build wealth in an investment vehicle that makes sense. So I'm excited to revisit with Damien, bring him back on the show. So let's jump right into it. All right, today I welcome back on the show, Mr. Damien Lupo. Damien, hey, thanks so much for joining us. Good to be back. It's it's like the ghost of Christmas past here. Uh, <laughs> well, it's been just a while for the audience members that may not remember. You were on the podcast episode 52 way back in 2017. So, so much has changed since then. I wanted to get you back on, catch up with you, talk about what you're doing, what's new in your world. But before we dig into all that, for the audience members that didn't catch that episode or may not remember, just tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, your background, your story. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I tell you what, between now and the last time, I feel like airline cargo, like I've gone about a quarter million miles in the last two years. <laughs> just, uh, I mean, basically my background is just, I'm all in when I live. And when I've done that, I've had some really crazy experiences, including losing all my money three times, almost dying a number of times. I don't think I shared this last time. I've jumped out of an airplane four times and I've had four, three accidents and one space shuttle exploded over me. So I've gone when I live, I don't really live on the sidelines. I'm in the middle of the field saying, me first, hit me harder. You know, that's kind of, that's how I've been pretty much my whole life. Because as a kid, I wasn't told, hey, this is easy. And here's a trophy for showing up. It was like, you're an idiot. And if you don't get all A's, you're stupid. And so I just kept pushing really hard and, you know, hey, we don't have anything. So if you want something, go deal with it. And so, you know, starting a business at 11, because I wanted to go buy my own groceries. I mean, that's really what it was. I tell the story of selling Nintendo games yeah, I wanted to play games, but I also wanted to go and be able to buy food because I didn't like what we were eating. And it's just, there's this weird obsession and I think it's lost on the population now. I think people are getting very soft and what's happening is they're becoming more and more victims. And I have a different philosophy. My philosophy is all around self-responsibility. It's about if you want it, you got to own it. You got to go out there and you got to take it and be willing to pay the price. You can take anything you want if you're willing to pay the price. And I've just paid a lot of prices. And I think that that's what differentiates me from a lot of other people and people that are hearing this, maybe it resonates and you go, you know what, maybe I need to pay a bigger price. I want something different, but I'm not paying the price. And I think that that's the big shift that needs to happen for people to have a different life. 
Yeah, Damien, I think that accountability is such an important factor and a critical like characteristic of people who are going to, you know, take that success to the next level, right? And that's very evident in how you've kind of lived your life. You're, you know, a very driven person, always out there doing things, making things happen, taking accountability for your own actions. And that's kind of got you to where you're at today. So tell us a little bit about kind of your story and, you know, how you've got to where you are today beyond kind of that go-getter mentality, if you will. Bottom line, I failed at everything. I mean, that's (laughs) sum it up in like one sentence. You fail your way into success or fulfillment is a better word. And it's in one of the books I wrote to talk about the difference between success and fulfillment. Success is not hard. I mean, you can go rob a bank and you're successful, but are you going to be fulfilled sitting in a cage? You know, like you have to really decide what it is. I think the missing piece is that we don't find the fulfillment and we go after the success and then we find that we're very, there's a hollow experience. And that's, that's what I did with my real estate stuff back in the 2000s. Lots of success, millions of dollars, Ferrari, girls, the whole deal. And then I got to a point where I lost it all. And I was like, well, wait a second, what was that for? And that's the problem. I didn't really have any, any for anything. There was no why. And then after that, I, was, I spent a few years basically with my, sucking my thumb in a fetal position, wondering what's the purpose. And my dad got sick. And before he passed away, he looked at me and he said, you know, there's a lot, really, there was so much that I wanted to do. And that to me was a breaking point. It was kind of a midpoint. It was like a halftime. Around 40 years old, I get this message of, oh, dang, you know what? There's a moment in your life where you're going to look back with regret. And that's what pivoted. It shifted me into a place where I said, all right, I'm going to do something totally different. What am I going to do? And then I spent a couple of years figuring out what to do about that. And that the shift was going to a place where I'm going to not just consume with the world and consume as a great hedonistic American, I'm going to actually go out there and contribute something. So there's the circulation. That was the big shift. It was how can I use what I am, who I am to lift other people up? And it came down to breaking financial shackles. It's about getting people free from themselves. I like how you put that success versus fulfillment. It's easy to go out and achieve success, but it's a harder thing to be fulfilled. And when you're talking about like the pursuit of money and kind of this empty hollowness, Let's kind of drill in on that because I think real estate investors, this is a real catch-22. Everything around real estate investors is kind of a numbers-driven game, right? Like I'm going to go buy this rental. It's going to cash flow this much. I'm going to scale my portfolio to X amount of doors, generate so much passive income. And it's all about numbers and money. And while that's good, what's your take on that? You know, like, is it a worthwhile pursuit to chase those dollars and that passive income metric? Or how would you go about expanding that goal? The answer is no. And I think we have to step back. It's not good or bad. It just is. And ultimately, if you go back a step and you ask yourself, who am I getting into bed with here? Like, who am I having an affair with? And that's the team. That's the people you're involved with. You can go out and create passive cash flow. I've had pitches from strip clubs. And I was like, all right, well, this is really cash flowing. Like, these things are amazing. And I said, I am not interested. That is not what I'm all about. So you can see numbers that are great. The question is, who are you sleeping with? And do you care? Do you want to be a whore? I mean, that's, I think that a lot of people are just saying, I'll whore myself out to any good IRR. I mean, that is a dumb idea because things happen. You know, there's people right now that are being investigated by the FBI and the Department of Justice, and they had a big turnkey type of deal that they were setting up and thousand clients, hundreds of millions of dollars that flew around. And they didn't actually ask, who am I dealing with? They didn't look under the hood. There was no truth. There was just sizzle and pop and, and sass. Uh, you know, one of our mutual friends, Vinny Chopra, is one of these guys that I just really like. Oh, yeah, Vinny. <laughs> yeah. And so like when you're around him, you're like, this guy's legit. He's not full of crap. And he's a very nice, he's just a nice human being. And I think a lot of people are, have, maybe they're nice, but what we see is a surface level version of them. We don't go deep. And really what we see is a lot of people that are just focusing on the money. And you got to measure things. It's not lost on me. You can't say, oh, I'm, I'm going to invest in puppy dogs and unicorns and everything's going to be great because rainbows are going to result. I mean, that's stupid. I think you have to ask yourself, who am I getting involved with first? It's not just the numbers. Professional investors look at the execution team. That's where they start. They don't start with the deal. The deal doesn't matter. You have a great deal and crappy people, it's going to result in a crappy outcome. But if you have great people, they can turn almost any type of chicken crap into chicken salad. You know, I mean, like that's real versus the other way around. And I think that We are missing that. We're just simply looking at the story, the sizzle, the numbers, and the little greed glands are going crazy. They're like, ooh, I'm going to double and triple my money. This is great. I'm a passive rock star. No, not really. You're just somebody that's buying into a story. So how is that different than an IPO with the next thing that's going to go from zero to billion to zero, like heads.com? Like you're really not digging deep enough. And I think that that's the thing that's going to hurt people. We got to dig deeper. Yeah, that's an interesting point. So much to take out of there, Damien. So so many parallels you can draw, but one I'm going to try to pull out of that is 
you know, when you're talking about investing and chasing those IRR numbers, right? Like you can go out and make a return on many different things, your strip club or, you know, invest with a subpar partner or whatever it is. But one thing maybe you could chase that might be a little bit more fulfilling is developing those relationships with really great and positive guys like our friend Vinny Chopper, right? So maybe that's something you could pull from that and, you know, draw that parallel, if you will. Here's the thing. It's easy to find people that will tell you, hey, look, three steps until you're wealthy and free. Like it's really easy to find it. It's all over the damn internet. YouTube it and you will find a million options. Sure. <laughs> uh, you're done. Okay. So what have you actually done other than created a course? What have you done other than stolen from people that's made you money? I'm a little bit, I'm a lot skeptical because I see so much BS out there. There's one guy that I used to, before I knew better, I worked with this kid up in Alaska and I watched him and he was skimming things off. He was basically getting people's money to invest in deals and he was pulling off like seven plus percent upfront and then locking them up. And I was watching this going, wait, there's no disclosure. There's no licensing. You're not following any rules. And then he shows up and he's he's got his three-piece suit and he's got his bling. And I'm looking at him going, you're a fraudster, man. And there's a lot of that. And I think there's a desperation because we are upset with our life and we're looking for somebody to validate the opportunity for us to shift our life. And then we buy into the guru on the mantle. And we've got to sit that back and say, hey, who's the guru? The guru is inside of us. If we're willing to pull it out and if we're willing to be a warrior, we're willing to commit and have discipline. It's not somebody else. We have the truth. We have the power, but we go the easy route. We just say, all right, that person's going to basically do it for me. If I just stare at their video and pay them a thousand bucks, all is good. Not so much. Yeah, yeah. Such good stuff there, Damien. I know you could go on and on talking about kind of like this philosophical mindset topic. I love that. I think it's great. I want to kind of switch gears for a second and talk a little bit about your background and your niche and how you really kind of turn all this philosophical stuff into where the rubber meets the road your background, let's just finally get right into it, the EQRP. Tell us a little bit about what it is, how it can help real estate investors, and how it can help you build true wealth so that we can kind of encompass all of this you know, mindset stuff and really take action with it. So there's an interesting thing that I talk about with the IRS being public enemy number one. And I think it can, <laughs> it's true. It can be, or it can be your best friend. So when you have these ding-dongs like AOC in Congress wanting to spread the wealth, you know what she should be doing is saying, hey, let's spread the tax code. Let's just empower people. And so what we see is that most people are giving away 70% of their money in taxes throughout their life. They earn it, 70% is going to go away. The other option is to do what people like Mitt Romney have done. Mitt Romney is a US senator and he's got a hundred million plus dollars in a Roth retirement account. That guy is not paying taxes. And it's because he actually read the code and he's using the code. The EQRP is literally the ultimate retirement account so that you can stop paying taxes. I mean, in the real estate space, especially now after the Tax Reform Act that, that happened in December of 2017, right after you and I spoke, there was a total shift. The tax code went hyper for real estate investors. And you can combine that piece of legislation and the, the part under the 401 section. Basically, if you're doing real estate and you've got some retirement money, you can stop paying taxes the rest of your life. And that's the big shift. The EQRP gives you that power. In any circumstance, literally, whether you have a company with 10 or 50 employees or you're by yourself, whether you're doing real estate, whether you're, I mean, it it doesn't matter what you're doing. This tool gives you the ability to have your money in your control. No financial advisor is going to say, hey, let's buy some stocks. It's you choosing what you want to do. It's you being self-responsible. It comes back to the philosophy that I think we have to have if we're going to be wealthy. And wealth is not money. It's not cash flow. Kiyosaki, Robert Kiyosaki and I were talking in a few months back and he said something that really hit me. He said, I'll tell you what wealth is. Wealth is the amount of lessons that you've learned by doing crap. It's about going out there and doing it. That and sounds I, like a candid definition by Robert. <laughs> yeah, I, went, I am super wealthy. And I was like, wow, this doesn't matter. I, I felt wealthier every time I went out and did something and learned because we're taught is go do something and win. And if you don't, you're a loser. And the loser is the one that doesn't do anything. You know, they're, like, they're studying, but they never actually take action. So EQRP is all about taking action because if you don't take action, nothing happens. And that's the big shift. I think something I've heard important that you said before, Damien, is it's not how much wealth you generate, it's how much wealth you keep or something along those lines, right? And that's kind of one of the purposes of this EQRP. It's the Qualified Retirement Plan, similar to a 401k, which many of the listeners tuning in right now are probably familiar with, probably even have one, or similar to an IRA. So tell us a little bit about how it compares and contrasts to both of those retirement plans. So the EQRP is literally you having your money in a checkbook that you control and you're driving the ship. And in a 401k, you're basically in the trunk of the car and that car is going somewhere, maybe <laughs> off driving it. Like that's how it works. An IRA is you're kind of there, but you're sort of a passenger. Like you're not in the driver's seat because you still have a custodian 
and you may or may not be able to do the deals you want. Oftentimes, it's because everything is so slow. When you're using an EQRP, you're able to invest because you have the checkbook. You can wire, you can fund in a matter of minutes. It doesn't take somebody else's permission. It doesn't take somebody else's okay. It's literally you doing what you want to do. So this gives you the ability to invest in things like real estate. You find a good deal, you want to do it. And the disaster that's looming right now is most people are investing in real estate using IRAs because a lot of custodians have marketed to a lot of promoters and all of a sudden it seems like a good idea. What they're not disclosing and they're not pushing is telling people that there's this thing called UBIT tax. And this is really important for anybody doing real estate, anybody using an IRA. You don't want to ever do this. When you have leveraged real estate, which has debt, you're going to pay a tax called UBIT when this property sells. So just to get into the weeds for a minute, because I think this is really important and people will be happy that they know about this. If you're investing in syndication, like a multifamily or something where there's a bunch of people involved, you've got some money in there and there's debt. Let's say you put 50,000 bucks and you were going to expect to get 100,000 five years later. When you get that profit, you're going to pay about a $12,000 tax bill if you used an IRA. That's the bottom line, what is happening right now. It's this huge chunk because of UBIT tax. And with an EQRP, it's exempt. And people say, well, I don't get it. Well, the thing is, nobody gets the IRS. It's weird. There's a bunch of code and it's just all mashed together. But that's the exemption. If you use the right account, then you're driving your car. You're not going off a cliff. You're going to the movies. You're going to dinner. Like You're going to keep your money is what you're going to do. And that's the big difference. You have It's about control. It's about protection from lawsuits. Even a lot of things that people are running into, like solo 401ks, they're not protected from lawsuits the way that big 401ks are. You can literally get sued because somebody stubs their toe in your driveway, they sue you and then you lose. And the court says, oh, you've got a bunch of money in a solo 401k. Great. We think you only need this much. That sucks. Like you built all this money and it can be taken away based on the state you're in, the court you're in, the judge. That stuff is a terrible situation. And most people aren't told about that or they don't know about that, but it's reality. So Damien, why isn't it common knowledge, this QRP? Why haven't many people heard of it? Fees. The entire system is set up with fees. It's about fees. The entire the institutions, the custodians are making billions and billions of dollars in fees for you breathing and you moving and you taking a crap and you doing anything. Like it is literally about the fees. And so what do you see? You see marketing from companies that are charging fees. What do you not see? You don't see people saying, hey, here's a way to do it where you're not going to be feed to death. Why? Because it's a better business model for somebody to spend a lot of money and then charge you up the butt. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a really good point. You know, you have to really be cognizant of where your money's going, why somebody is selling you a certain product or a certain vehicle, right? And, you know, kind of what's behind those curtains, kind of like you alluded to earlier. Here's an example. I I was with one of my clients and we're doing a presentation in Texas uh, just a couple of days ago. And he said, you know, I set this up and he's a very sophisticated investor and syndicator. and, And he said, I spent a couple of months digging in, had my accountants, my attorneys, And they said, yeah, this is great. So he does it. And then he looks at his 401k and he realized over the 27 years that he's had it, that his actual return after the fees was between two and 3%. And then he looked at his actual fees and he said, wow, this literally I was paying three times what it cost to set up an EQRP every year in fees for this company babysitting my cash. He was paying $100 a month for them to babysit his cash. It It was cash. It wasn't even doing anything. And this is what people are dealing with. But we're disconnected. We're not actually looking at the stuff because I think we're a little afraid. We're a little intimidated. And quite honestly, the system tells us we're too stupid to actually have an opinion. And I disagree. I think you're totally smart enough to do it if you're willing to spend some time learning and growing. Sure. So Damien, maybe the listeners sitting out there right now thinking, hey, Damien, I'm an aspiring real estate investor, or I have a single family home or a couple properties in my portfolio, still working a day job, have a 401k. Is this EQRP right for me? What's the design demographic for this retirement plan? Is there a certain type of person that benefits more than someone else? Can you address that? Yeah, people ask a similar question. They say, well, how much do I need to get started? Like, is uh, this, yeah. what am I doing? Like, you know, I've got a job or whatever. Here's the thing. When I started, I first house, my first rental house, I bought with negative 6,000. I borrowed from my visa to buy the stupid house. And <laughs> don't do that, by the way. It's a very stupid plan. But sometimes stupid is what you need to do. And then I, the rest of the money I borrowed, so here's the thing. If I had done that with a Roth EQRP, I would have literally turned that 6,000 that wasn't even mine. I would have turned 6,000 into about 150,000 in two years because I used leverage. And so do you need a lot of money? No, you need to be able to go out there and do something because if you're just going to be passive, it, Jacob, imagine like you have a relationship and you go to your partner and you're like, 
I've decided I'm going to be a passive investor. And I think passive is good. So let's have passive sex. This is a great plan. And your, your partner's <laughs> like, I'm out of here. Like, are you crazy? Nobody likes that. It's, it's a terrible plan for life to just be passive. And that's the same thing with investing. If you're not actively engaging and seeking out and creating with your mind, because that's the biggest account you've got is between your ears, not in your account. So I think when we do that, when we think about the possibility of turning a few thousand dollars into hundreds and millions of dollars, that shifts the game. And when you can do it tax-free, it totally changes your life. Yeah, that's a really good point there, Damien. So you know, once people have realized, hey, there's this possibility out there that I haven't heard of much of, or I'm going to look into it and decide this QRP is for me, what are some benefits of this QRP? What are some reasons one would you know, go into this QRP versus sitting in their IRA or putting money in their 401k? So the biggest of the reasons people do it is because they want to have control. They don't want to have somebody else feeding them to death. They like their money more than they like giving it to the IRS. I mean, that's a big shift. And when you do this, you're going to be keeping your money. You're not going to be giving it away. There's a neat thing inside of it that allows you to borrow up to 50,000 bucks. It's like next time you go to a car dealership or you want to buy a car, you literally can write yourself a check for 50 grand, go buy the car. And then guess what? You don't have to go beg Bank of America for some money. Like it's a, you've got some of these different options. I happen to like physical gold and a lot of our clients like that too. You can use your pre-tax money to buy physical gold inside of this. Can't do that with an IRA. It's, you've got all these different options and some of them are exciting and some of them you don't care. The, the truth is you've got options that you're not going to get anywhere else. And so you can do a lot of different things that you wouldn't normally be able to do. I think that's what people like. It goes back to like what we we're talking about at the beginning of the show. And it's, you know, you're taking it responsibility for your own actions, whether those result in good outcomes or bad outcomes. At the end of the day, you're going to take responsibility for that, right? Same thing with this EQRP. You're going to take responsibility for your own investments. You're not going to leave it up to you know some Wall Street banker who's managing a bunch of funds that control your 401k or that your 401k is invested in to hopefully one day you know provide enough returns that you can save up this nest egg and retire, right? So I really think that's an important thing to take out of the conversation here. That's it. I mean, it's really, it, it is, we started off with the philosophy and just my rant. And, the, and <laughs> it, it's a, more a philosophy question than anything, because if you're a victim, if you blame people, if your common conversation is bitching and moaning about other people and how they're impacting your life and whether Trump is tweeting good or bad things for your life, like if that's your main conversation, this is not for you. This is for somebody that says, yeah, that's outside noise. I've got a personal economy that I've, I'm in charge of and I'm going to do something with it. And this is a good part of that. This is a good tool. This isn't something for victims or blamers or whiners or criers. This is a terrible idea. Yeah, that's a great point. So somebody sets up this EQRP and they decide they're going to go invest in real estate. What's the best way or some unique ways that they can invest in real estate through the QRP that they wouldn't have access to in, say, the IRA or especially the 401k? One of the things, so I've seen people do all sorts of stuff. You can do basically anything. Um, I've seen people do a lot of international investing. I've seen them going into deals where there's restrictions on IRAs and there's really a no limits on an EQRP for them to invest in terms of the volume, the size, the number of investors. I've seen them be able to do deals where there was a closing in a matter of a few days and they were able to fund it. And I've seen people with IRAs go, ah, damn it, I missed it again because it took three weeks for my custodian to process my stupid request. I mean, this is, it's the speed and it's the choice. And that, that's, I, so I've seen everybody do everything and it really changes the game. One of the things that people don't like doing inside of IRAs is things that have a lot of in and out. So maybe you've got a rental property and you've got a lot of money going in and out with uh, rental income and expenses. Every time you do those things, the typical custodian is charging 25 or 50 bucks. So like, you know, a lot of times rental property doesn't have cash flow that's all that much more than 50 or 100 bucks a month. Well, if that's what it costs you in a transaction fee every time you do something, that property sucks because of the tool, the vehicle that you're in. That's one of the things when you take away all those in and out little nitpicky, like those little charges, it really changes things. And so you can do just about anything. I mean, let me also touch on what you can't do. You can't go and invest for your own benefit today, meaning you can't go buy a house that you're going to go live in today. You can't do something that's going to give you a benefit. Like if you're a real estate agent, you can't use your EQRP money to go buy a property and get a commission. Like there are rules around this. And this is why it's really important to have a team. And one of the reasons that we, in this market, in this space, what we do is unique and people try to find little offshoots. We charge more than the other, the, like the Walmart shopper type of experience. We charge more because there's a team built and there's a different product. It's a higher level product. The people that come and say, well, I found a thing that it's kind of like this and it's cheaper. I say that and you should probably go with that because what you're not getting there is the team. We're here investing in you and your future and we're spending a lot of time on you making sure that you're protected and you've got all the options. That's just generally not what the market is. It's like buying a Ford versus a Ferrari, like totally different experience. 
Yeah, sure, sure. That makes sense. If one's going to invest through a QRP, there's a certain level of responsibility that comes with that. You know, you're now ultimately in charge of the investment. Is there any added risk? Yeah, if you're reckless, you're going to blow your feet off. Like, you're really- <laughs> okay, <laughs> you have all your money in the checking account, and there's nobody saying, "Oh, maybe you shouldn't do this." So, yeah, over the years, there have been a number of people, probably a half a dozen people that it became very obvious they were too nervous and they didn't trust themselves. And if they had kept their money, we literally shut the stuff down. We said, this is not a good fit. They said, yeah, that's great. I don't want to do this. And it was the right choice because they were going to do something foolish and then they were going to blame me or they're going to blame their cat or their wife or whatever. And it was the wrong thing. So the risk is you're in control. And so if you're reckless or you know, you're 22 and you think you need a Ferrari and that's going to make you happy like I was, maybe this is a bad idea. If you actually trust yourself and you're responsible, this is a total game changer. Yeah. Okay. So let's lay out a scenario here where someone is investing through a QRP and they want to go buy a rental property. What would the process look like for that scenario? Basically, you look at your plan and and the plan is effectively its own business. So if if a business is going to go do something, the business writes a check, the business makes an offer. So if you, let's say in your world, in your typical world, you've got an LLC that you're going to use to go buy a property. So you would make an offer with the name of the LLC. Same thing with this, with the EQRP, you're going to make an offer in the name of the EQRP and you're going to fund the property from the EQRP. You're the trustee, which means you sign the checks. You get to do, it's, it's like being the president of an LLC. Think of it that way if you think about okay. the trustee. So the president writes the checks, the president signs the checks. EQRP, the trustee, which is you, signs the checks. Nobody else is, you don't need permission. You just literally write the check. And then the money comes back to the plan and it goes back into the plan's bank account. So it's like a siloed business. Everything is there. And then you can kind of do what you want with it. You can grow it. And then at some point, you can start taking the money out and distributing it or just keep growing it. The thing that is the most powerful is the Roth component. And it's not just for you building it up. It's literally for when you die because you can bequeath the Roth to your heirs and the Roth is tax-free to them. They get to build it and spend it the rest of their lives tax-free. So if a smarter 22-year-old than Damien were to receive this big pile of cash and they'd been trained, imagine what that looks like. They can build and grow and spend an account the rest of their life. They're no longer paying taxes. So sorry, AOC, you're not getting any money from me. I mean, and it's just not going to work. This is the power of using this tool, multi-generational tax-free living. That's how you become the heir to a Mitt Romney-like right, inheriting a multi-million, deca-million dollar retirement account like this. So Let's talk about the Roth versus traditional options in this QRP. That is pre and post tax. Can you just kind of break those down and compare and contrast the two options there? So typical 401ks, IRAs are deferred money. And people are really hyper about having a tax advantage today. They say, okay, I'm going to put some money into this thing and it's a deduction off my taxes. Okay, that's interesting. But we've got to give that money to Roth. And the reason we want to do that is because If you're growing money in an investment, and any sophisticated accountant will tell you that's a bad idea to put money into a retirement account, let it grow, and then take it out as ordinary income when you do a distribution. So in order to get around that, we convert it to Roth. So there's two pieces. There's a deferred and Roth. Roth means you pay taxes now, theoretically, and then you never pay taxes again. And with deferred, you don't pay taxes now, you get a tax deduction, and then all the money when it comes out is taxed at your ordinary income. Right. This has been pitched over the years as a good strategy because people will say your expenses are lower when you're older. And I'm like, why would you want to plan to be broke? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. Let's plan to be rich. What does that mean? We don't want to be in the highest tax bracket. So how do you do that? You use the Roth. Effectively, you're getting your money into a place where it grows and then it's taken out tax-free. That's what Roth is. An EQRP has both the deferred and the Roth and there's no income limits. So big problem, if you make too much money, you can't do Roth inside an IRA. People talk about backdoor IRAs and all this jazz, but even if you can put $5,000 in a Roth IRA, good. What's $5,000 going to do you? Especially when you're making two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 a year over that income threshold, right? It's like, it's a negligible part of your contribution. Totally right. It's insignificant. So what do we want to do? We want to find a better option with an EQRP. You can put over $50,000 into it and it can all be Roth if you want to. And one of the coolest things I was talking about with the real estate stuff that's happened in the last 18 months, last two years. When that Reform Act happened, there's something called bonus depreciation came into existence. So if you go buy a piece of property and you happen to be qualified as a real estate professional, which is a good idea, somehow doing that or have a spouse do that, then you're able to use depreciation to offset income from converting deferred money to Roth. 
So what does that mean? It means, let's say you have $100,000 in a deferred IRA or 401k, and you want it to be Roth. And you, so you can convert it inside of an EQRP. It's called an in-plan rollover. It's converted. That 100000 is added to your income. The problem is it's added to your income. And you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to pay $40,000 in taxes. Here's how you get around it. If you go buy a property, let's say you buy a three, $400,000 house, and you've got bonus depreciation because you qualify, you can use that 30% depreciation against the other income. So let's say you have $100,000 in depreciation you get to use this year. You can convert $100,000 from deferred to Roth, zero tax. This is an epic way to shift away from paying taxes at all by using the code. It's easy to gloss over all these details, Damien, and kind of get lost in the weeds, but this is a really, really powerful strategy, tax saving strategy, wealth building strategy, kind of all built in one. Yeah. And it, I'll give you another one. This is one that applies with or without a retirement account. It's one of the coolest things out there. If you've got kids, and I'm not saying you should go have kids to do this, but if you've got, <laughs> and you've got some type of business or consulting or you've got income, if you've got management income from your real estate, you can pay your kids $12,000 a year. It's a deduction to you. So it reduces your actual income. And then it's tax-free to them because there's no income tax on the first 12000 You know your kids are going to cost more than $12,000 a year each anyway. You may as well push the money over to them. And if you want to, you can set up, you can have an EQRP for them. That 12000 can go directly into a Roth account because it's earned income. The $12,000 is now in a Roth. It's going to grow tax-free forever. You got the deduction and you can pull that 12000 and all those 12,000 contributions out anytime, say at college, no tax, no penalty. And the rest of it keeps growing for life for free, no taxes. This is a cool strategy. Yeah, that is really powerful stuff. So correct me if I'm wrong here, Damien, but with a Roth, you can withdraw your original contribution, just not the growth on that contribution. I'm probably not saying that the most eloquently, but is that correct? And if so, could you kind of jazz up those words? <laughs> yeah, anything you put in, you can pull out anytime you want. And oh, there you go. And it gets better because if you move your money into, let's say you have a big old IRA or an old 401k and you move it into an EQRP, you can convert all the money into Roth. And then five years later, all the money you converted, you could pull all of that out regardless of what age you are. That so is really powerful stuff. Got that. Like you literally, you go, oh, I'm 40 years old. I don't want to wait 20 years for my retirement money. Convert it all to Roth. And then you can pull out as much as you want of your basis, whatever you've converted in five years, and then let the rest of it run for retirement. Like this is a huge opportunity for people at any age. It doesn't matter if you're 20 or 50 or 70. And maybe you're not thinking that you will need a withdrawal in the next five years, but if so, that's just an important reason why to go ahead and get this set up now. It is. And it's also one of the things when you're doing real estate, you don't want to hold long-term real estate inside of a retirement account. You want to be able to use the depreciation and everything. What you're doing is you're using your retirement account for things that are going to trigger taxes. And like a long-term rental is really not going to trigger taxes if you've got depreciation offsetting all the cash flow. So what you can do is you can convert and then five years down the road, take all your basis out and go buy real estate that you're going to live off of. And that's that way all that money is coming back to you and it's not stuck inside the retirement account. This is where a team is so important. If you go buy an off-the-shelf type of you know, random cheap product, you're not going to have the strategy. You're not going to have the team that's going into this. That's the value in going to the right place. It's not just the car. It's who built the car, what's under the hood, who's there to help navigate, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. Well, how about this as a scenario, Damien? Maybe you want to invest in real estate, but outside of your qualified retirement account, you can go take a loan from that account, go out, put a down payment on a, let's say, duplex or whatever it might be, hold that in your personal name, and then pay back that loan to your QRP. That's a pretty plausible scenario too, right? That happens all the time, Jacob. It's a great strategy. You actually tap in it's like basically having a line of credit for anything you want, including, I mentioned the car, but yeah, you want to go buy a duplex? Great. Write yourself a check for 50000 bucks, and it's your down payment. You pay your plan back. You get to add a little bit more money with interest that you're paying yourself. Like It doesn't yeah, right. cost right? It's just adding more to your pile. And then you've got an asset that's paying you cash flow indefinitely. So you're leveraging off of your account. It's a really smart strategy. Almost like being your own bank in this scenario. Yeah. You just don't have any insurance company charging you fees. Like, you know, I like this better, but they're, I mean, they're both applicable for certain things. And don't get confused about this because a lot of times people say, well, is this like infinite banking and stuff? That's a totally different thing. And it has its place. It's just, you have to make sure that you're looking at your whole strategy because everybody's selling products to oftentimes pretty much, not everybody, but oftentimes people are in love with their thing and their thing is the best thing since sliced bread. I will tell people this is a bad idea for you. And it's the same thing with anything else. It's really looking holistically at the whole person and their whole life, not just saying, I've got this thing to sell, so you should buy it. That's a terrible person. You don't want those people in your life. Sure. 
Well, Damien, this is a really broad subject and it might be new for a lot of the audience members listening in right now. So if they want to learn more, where's a good resource they can learn more about the QRP and just about this subject in general? Do you have any good recommended resources that you could provide? I'm going to make it easy because you're probably listening to this on your phone or watching on your phone. Text the word QRP to the number 72,000. And that's going to give you the report. It's basically the summary of everything we've been talking about, a 13-page report. And if you want to go deeper, you can get a copy of my book and I'll send that out to you as well. You'll have an option for that. So just text the word QRP to 72,000 and it'll literally give you a cliff notes. And, and if you want to dig deeper, you certainly can. That's awesome. So that's text QRP, the letters QRP to the number 72,000 for that 13 page summary of essentially this conversation and more. And then if you want to do any more reading, Damien's got a book called the QRP book, new edition with this year's 2019 rules. Damien, is there anything else you'd like to leave with the audience members before we wrap up? One of the things that's happening right now is a lot of times I have a lot of friends that are saying, I'm listening to like two hours of podcasts every day and I'm, they're listening to all this information. It's all interesting. But yeah. if you don't do anything, like if you're in your car right now, pull over and text QRP to 72,000, do something. It's not going to happen for you. Like people have become a little bit wacky with this whole idea of the secret where you just will the bag of money to fall on your head from the sky. It doesn't happen like that. You can go get the money, but you've got to be aware of it and you've got to do something. So I think the most important thing people can do is go do something and, and let go of this idea that you might make a mistake or, or something's going to go wrong. Literally do something other than just consuming. If you just keep consuming, it's never going to work. You're going to drown in the information. Yeah, I love it. Such important advice there, Damien. Hey, it's been a lot of fun, Damien. It's always a good time having you on the podcast. You've got such a unique way of kind of translating information to the listeners and myself as always. So hey, really appreciate you coming on the show. Let's get you back on in the near future to talk more about this subject. Sounds good. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks everybody for listening. I appreciate the time and the commitment and the discipline to get it done. Yeah. And Damien, one more thing before we go, tell the audience members where they can find you. I almost forgot. <laughs> Best place to find me is literally if you want to connect with me directly, find me on LinkedIn. That's where I find it. Let me give you a little tip about LinkedIn in case you're not doing this. Write okay. a message to people. If you're going to reach out to somebody, don't just say, hey, connect. Like say, hey, you know, I don't know you, but here's why I want to connect with you. I get people that are connecting with me. My first question is great. Hey, nice, nice to connect with you. But why are you connecting with me? What's interesting? And if you pitch me, I'm unconnecting. So <laughs> literally, be, be personal. It's about relationships, man. It's not just about collecting another bunch of likes or people in your network. It's like literally build your relationships one conversation at a time. Damien, I love it. Thanks so much. We'll link all of your information in the show notes. Damien's LinkedIn, reach out to him. Tell him how you heard about it on the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast. Text QRP to 72000. Damien, thanks so much for coming on the show again. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, Damien. Take care. All right, that wraps up this week's episode with our guest, Damien Lupo. Hey, I hope you got a ton of value from today's conversation. As you can tell, Damien is a really enthusiastic and knowledgeable guy. Well, if you want to learn more about any of the resources we mentioned in the show today, you can find all of those in the show notes. Once again, if you want to receive that 13-page guide that details this conversation in a bit more detail, text the letters QRP to 72. 000. That's QRP to 72,000. Well, hey, if you want to learn more, connect with me or reach out. I'd love to hear from you. You can do so at www.jacobayers.com. Till next week, engineer the lifestyle you want. You've been listening to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, providing you actionable content to build your real estate empire. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for personal advice. The opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have a potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom, LLC, exclusively.